Hello and welcome to another episode of Worlds Collide. I'm your host Justin. And I'm Mitch. And today we are bringing you our 17th episode of Season 2. Featuring none other than... The Breaker of the Bat. Breaker of the Bat. Bane. Bane. So he's one of Batman's more formidable villains, I'd say. Yes. In both mental and physical alike. Yes. As a matter of fact, he's... Yeah, there's... So while doing my research on Bane, uh, finding out more and more on how dangerous Bane really is, especially uh, given the correct writer for the story. Oh, the story's writer had to do well, no, with Bane. His... Bane's background and his character concept and everything lends to a character that, if given to a good writer, could. Ah. Could be uh, could open up doorways to really good storytelling and make Bane a complete badass. He is a pretty big badass. He is a pretty is. big badass. Now, why don't we start with his origin? Origin. So, when did we first catch a glimpse of Bane? All right. So Bane. So in the early nineties, going over to public hi- hi- publication history a little bit. Back in the early nineties, this is when I first started re- getting into comics. In the early nineties. Uh, both Marvel and DC, DC especially, was on a big kick of kill kill our big guys because they did the death of Superman and then they did the uh, uh, Nightfall where Batman gets his back broken. Yes. So Batman had to get replaced and Superman was dead. So DC was trying to... Uh, then after that, they killed Hal Jordan. And uh, yeah, so DC was on his big... big Bender on killing people, kill our heroes. Yeah, and Doomsday was specifically created to kill Bat, uh, kill Superman, and Bane was specifically created to do this job, to break Batman's back, to tie Batman out to let another Batman take his place. So, how old's Bane in comic creations? Does he get his start in the nineties? Yeah. Wow. So yeah. he's a newer villain. Yes. He's had one hell of a successful career then yes being a new one because my first introduction was bane had to be the batman robin movie yeah <laughs> that wasn't bane that was some kind of plant golem or something but i'm just thinking along the timeline <laughs> yeah, yeah okay because yeah, yeah. i probably had to see that mid 90s yeah early early like 2000s yeah probably 90 i think that movie came out in 2000 didn't it no, I'm pretty sure it's still in the 98, 90s. maybe? Yeah, I can't even look that up. So, like, 97. 97. So, yeah. within years of him getting his release, he made it to the big screen. Yeah. That's just what I'm trying to get at for how successful of a career this character made. Yeah, his first appearance was actually in Batman Vengeance of Bane, issue number one, in 1993. So, he got his first appearance in his own comic line. Right, and that's the one that I threw up today on our Instagram post for Vengeance of Bane. Yeah. It's a part one, part two. Yeah. So that was his first appearance. Wow, that's wicked. So yeah, in that in that comic, they showed his origin. Yes. Born in prison. Yes. Mother kills. Yes. Basically taken advantage of and yeah. So yeah. Quarantined. So, so uh, his father. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> representing. We got our little men in the back here representing as well. Yeah. Here wait. Yeah, can you, can you, you get, see him? You get him. Or should we take him out of the package? Too much glare? That's okay. Just get a bigger TV, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, so Bane's father, what well, his name was Edmund Edmund Dorrance, um, also known as King Snake. Now, do we find all that out in the original issue? That's something we don't find out until much later down the road. Sort of. Thought. You do find out in his original origin, the reason why he was put in jail was to serve his father's sentence. So his father, being this King Snake, evaded capture. So they took his wife, and uh, who was still pregnant at the time, of course. put her in jail, and when she gave birth... She gave birth to Bane, and Bane was born in prison and was made to live out his father's sentence from birth. Wow. That is brutal. Yeah. And, like, it wasn't easy. No. 
Like, uh, I believe in that very first comic origin, it describes how his mother was uh, killed at some point and just literally thrown out to the sharks to be eaten. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, so that's right. So, uh, his mother ends up getting killed by the inmates. Yep. And, uh, yeah, just like you said, like, when she got killed, rather than giving her a bur- bur- uh, bur- bur- proper burial, burial, burial thank you, <laughs> <laughs> or even uh, doing an investigation, because they don't want to do an investigation, they just threw, threw her into the ocean so the sharks could eat her. Now, there's something our viewers here have to understand about this prison. Now, do you yes. know the name of the prison? Yeah, it's, um, this is... Uh, I know the name of the prison is Pena uh, Udro, but Santa Prisca is the island. Santa Prisca. Okay, so on this island, there lies a prison. <laughs> yes. And this prison is not meant to, to, keep, people... to keep people from getting in. No. No, you can come in. Yeah. You just can't come up. Yeah. And it wasn't there to rehabilitate prisoners. It was there just to... You did bad, you're going in here, you're never going to see the light of day. It was a holding cell. It yeah. was, uh, we don't care what happens next. Yeah. It was, we don't need to feed you, we don't need to clothe you, we just don't even need to check on you. Yeah. We will let the prisoners basically govern their own prison. It's a lot like for those who have seen uh, Prison Break. I think it's like the third or fourth season of Prison Break, but that's Sona Prison, where they've got the prisoners kind of run the prison more than the guards. It's kind of like that. I want to get into Prison Break. I've never watched it. My, if my mom was watching, she was a huge Prison Break fan. Yeah. Um, I never watched it, but because I do watch Legends of Tomorrow and Flash and all of that, uh, the the two main guys from Prison Break are um, are uh, Captain Cold and Heatwave. Yeah. Um, that was probably one of my first introductions to those those actors. Yeah. Although, obviously. He, the one brother, Heatwave, he's, what, the big wrestler, right? They, they're both not wrestlers. Oh, really? I yeah. thought he was a wrestler. No. Interesting. So, um, that was my first introduction to him, though. Yeah. Prison Break, great show. Yeah. Um, I would say that's your best relation to what this prison that Bane grew up in was kind of like. You'll yeah. see it if you ever watch the show. Very ungoverned. Very lawless land. That yeah. You do what you want because the other prisoners will see you. Yeah. And I believe it was shortly after his mother was killed, uh, he got into an altercation with another prisoner. And during this altercation, he was thrown off uh, a ledge and basically face planted on the ground, uh, putting himself in a coma. Yeah. And during this coma, uh, you know, he survived it. Yeah. <laughs> he came out forever injured. Like, kind of like a feral dog after this thing. Sort of. Yeah, so you're talking about the, talking about the hallucination he got. Yeah, so during during this coma, he suffered a big hallucination. It was uh, more of a foretelling. Yeah, yeah, he saw his future self. Yeah, like an aged version yeah. of him. He was a grown man, like... Muscular as shit. Yeah, <laughs> brick shit house, nothing to be messed with. Yeah. Telling him, you know what, you're, you're meant for greatness. Yeah. Yeah, the blood of kings... Yeah. Let's see it through, but first, you need to rid yourself of fear. Yeah, you need to conquer fear. Yeah, and it showed fear as the emblem or the symbol of the bat. Yeah. So, where Bruce saw his fear, yeah. uh, idolized and symbolizes the bat, yeah. Bane in turn also saw it as the icon of the bat, which I found very, very suiting. Yeah. So, here's the part where the, what I was talking about... <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> oh man, no! As soon as it got warm enough for me to put on shorts, shorts were going on. <laughs> uh, but this is the part where I was saying that Batman, that that Bane has the elements to be put into amazing storytelling. So if if you do a side by side comparison, Bane to Batman, all mm-hmm. right. So good and bad brother. <laughs> well, okay, so they both lost their parents. Bane was his mom, witnessed his mom getting eaten by sharks. Bruce yep. witnessed his parents get shot. Yep. They both swore to dominate fear, dominate by conquering fear. It won't be a ruling factor in their life that they live by. They will rise above fear to do what they need. That's right. Bruce Wayne traveled the world to develop his mind 
and his intellect and his combat prowess. Where Bane brought the world through books and knowledge to, to his himself. prison and through his resources, he brought knowledge to himself, knowing that if I read these books, the secrets in these books will lead me to greater power and greater control. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So that's the one thing that they have not done well enough, in my opinion, in any iteration of Bane in the live action. So the uh, Batman or Robin version. <laughs> and the Dark Knight Rises, even the Dark Knight Rises version. The Dark Knight Rises version, like Tom Holland's, or Tom Holland's, Tom Hardy's Bane was excellent. He was excellent. But he still was not, in the end, at the end of the story, though, spoilers they for up. a movie that's been like over 20, over, over 10 years old. Uh, but at the end of the movie, he's still just a henchman. He's, He's a he, puppet. Yeah. Natalia. Yeah. And that's not Bane. Bane is nobody's puppet. Bane is highly intelligent. But they wrote it into the story that it was a loophole, that she was the baby he saves. And yes. he has this, you know, a, a, attachment to it, and he'll sacrifice himself for her. Fine, you wrote it so it worked. But yes. you wrote an untrue character to Bane. Yes, to Bane, Yes. Yes. Um, still a fantastic movie, and he did an amazing job. And yep. Now, to your point, though. Yes. Um, one of the things I found when I was just researching was at one point in the comics, it's uh, basically let loose that Bane and Batman might be brothers. There was there was a story of that. and It, and, and it the, turned out that they weren't. Yeah. Um, but it turned out that when... Bruce's father was much younger, traveling the world. He had a close connection with Bane's mother at one yeah. point. And they were seen in photographs and doing research and things together. And so during this, the Bane and Batman, they said, well, we got to get down to the bottom of this. Are we long lost brothers or what? And they did a blood test. And during the course of this blood test being done, they're working together. And they were actually working together um, to the point where Bane saved Batman's life. Taking, uh, knocking, a sh knocking him out of the way to take a shot from King Snake, actually his father, which mortally wounds Bane, and then they find later at the end of the story that, you know what, blood tests prove that we're not brothers, but you know, I think we're a lot closer now. Yeah. And that, that was kind well, of the just, point of the story. And that's just it. So when I first started doing research on Bane, I thought there wasn't going to be a, a lot from Bane research because I knew Bane was a relatively new. Like, yeah, I didn't 90s, even know he was this new. Yeah, ninety three is still like old now, but in comparison to in comparison to the rest of his rogues gallery, he's he's new. Well, he's twenty seven compared to a lot of the characters we've talked about are sixty, eighty plus. Exactly. You know, in terms of he, he's younger than me. Yeah. Where most of the co characters we're talking about are twice my age. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. In sense of they've been around that long. There's yeah. been stories. There's been media. There's been shows. Like Bane's have been in countless TV series, mm -hmm. countless animated. Mm -hmm. He's gotten his own starring in well the shitty Batman Robin, <laughs> and like you said, yeah. the the new trilogy. Yeah, like he's been a star. Yeah, for only being around for twenty seven years, he's had a hell of a lot of showtime. Yeah, and that's just it. That's what I'm finding out is that. There's a lot more depth to this character who's been around only since 1993. Yeah. So, as far as writing, yes. um, have you read many of his stories? I have not. Okay, because my next question would be, which would be your favorite? But yeah. If you haven't really been able to dabble and experience multiple, it's hard to answer the next one. No, yeah. So, I haven't read... I didn't read Nightfall. I wanted to, but I never did read Nightfall. However, what I did read... I did read a few issues of Nightfall, but I didn't read the whole thing. Right, and it's kind of a package deal. You wanna you wanna get the whole story. That's right. I did read a lot of so during Nightfall. So Nightfall was the first story with Bane. Nightfall was a story where Bane breaks Batman's back. So let's talk about Nightfall for a second, just to showcase Bane's intelligence. So we're essentially seeing snippets of Nightfall in the Tom Hardy movie. Sort of, sort of. In a, in a, in essence. Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, Bane, when he first got out of uh, prison and left Santa Prisca, he was sought out to go after Batman because he read about him and uh, he read about him in prison. I think we're or missing, heard about him in prison. I think we're missing a few steps though, of things that happened to him in prison. Oh yeah, yeah. I skipped a bunch of things that happened to him in prison. Yeah, 
Um, kind, kind of that led him on the path that made him want to be the best, beat the bat, even go to Gotham. Because Gotham wasn't even on his radar at this point. No, no, it wasn't until he met... Uh, Zombie what? and... Uh, I forget the name of the other guy. You have Zombie, you have... One second, let me... I've got the names here somewhere. Trog. Trog's the one who saves him in jail, and yeah. that's how he suffers the initial injury. When another inmate tries to take advantage of him, Trog intervenes, pummeling this other inmate, but he gets knocked over the ledge in the process. You have Zombie. Yeah. Uh-huh. Zombie's the uh, biochemical medic who's basically going to break down the venom serum to recreate it for them. Yeah, and you have Bird. Bird. Bird's the one who came from Gotham and yeah. started getting in his ear. Telling them all these stories about the bat, and you want to hear something funny about those three? What's that? All three of them are uh, named after after the writers' uh, favorite bands. <laughs> because think about it—you got the trogs, the zombies, and the birds. That's funny. All three of them are are bands from the nineteen seventies. Oh, that's awesome! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that brought us to him wanting to basically go to Gotham. Yeah. Find the bat, beat the bat. Yeah. Now, I've got a lot more notes of what happened to him in prison, but I'm going to skip a lot of that. Just because, um, ultimately, it doesn't really had that much of an effect on the end goal, which is Nightfall is what I wanted to get to. Absolutely. It's just, and, like, I don't want to go a beat-by-beat, step-by-step step step description of everything that happened to Bane, because we would be here for, like, three hours. Be here for a bit. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, so he ends up escaping with these three inmates. These three inmates that became his, the only thing that you could, he could ever consider friends, really. And they basically escape after they do the whole medical procedure to inject him with the venom. Yes. They put the medical devices into his brain so yes. he can direct inject. Yeah. He was the only person then in the entire prison and all their tests that actually survived this procedure. Yeah. But because he'd done so many years of meditation yeah. and hardening of the body, the will, the mind... Like, in prison, he didn't sleep. Yeah. He only meditated a few hours a night. Well, I just say, okay, so you know what? I am going to talk a little bit about his time in prison. Just I think because... it's pretty pivotal to make him the man that he is today, to beat the bat. And, and, to, the point, and to paint a picture for the audience uh, of what kind of character Bane is. So, Bane, I forgot what he did, but Bane did something. He got put in a hole. Um, he and... came out of his coma... A feral savage yeah. and immediately started killing anyone on his radar, anyone who never gave him a wrong look. Yeah, that's what it was. He didn't yeah. like. The guy who tried to uh, use him to uh, for his own means, yep. he ends up going to kill him. Oh, yeah. Stabs him brutally, kills him with the shiv, and yeah. next, next, next series of murder, murder, murder until they lock him in the hole. Yeah. And in this hole, there's a, there's basically a passage to the ocean. Yeah. So every night, as tide flows in, his self floods. Yeah. So every night is a fight sur- for survival for, for Bane. Just yeah. just against the elements. Yeah. Just to breathe. Yeah. <laughs> and in comes with the tide uh, sea creatures. Yeah. Crabs and fish that he's got to fight and eat and yeah. kill. Yeah. They ended up being his source of nutrients. Source of nutrients, yeah. That made him big and strong. Tons yeah. of protein in the sea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But basically, because of this, he didn't sleep much. No. He learned to meditate. Yeah. And it was during this teachings the, the, these learnings of his when they did the process to make him bane yeah uh, inject him with the venom serum he was able to slow down his breathing his heart rate and his body's signs to the fact that they thought he was dead yeah they threw him into the ocean to get rid of him the same way they did his mother yeah and when the sharks came to eat him he, he punched t- them out <laughs> tore them in pieces <laughs> He tore holes and rips and tears into yeah. these sharks. He ripped yeah. them apart. Yeah. Uh, Just to return to the prison. Yes. But need I say that when he threw him into the ocean, he was already injected with the venom. Oh, yeah. So he's strong. That's why he was able to rip apart sharks like that. Yes. It's not like, wow, how can any man do this? Well, yeah. Here I got the venom. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. He So... When he got out of the hole and he uh, masked, he had, so every, the entire prison worshipped him when he got out of the hole because nobody else had made it out of the hole. And he virtually made it through by strength of will alone because he was given nothing. 
He was given nothing. He was born in prison. It's not like he has any formal education other than the, the formal education that was given to him by some uh, Jesuit priest. Well, I believe it was Bird who first started teaching him how to read and bringing him books. And... Yeah, well, Bird a- afterwards started yeah. bringing him books and whatnot yeah. to educate him. But yeah. but before that, when he was in the hole, he it's not like he, no, he had nothing. Uh, so he survived that of strength of will alone. So when he came out, they, nobody fucked with him. Everybody admired him in the prison. And this is when he started getting into the books and start training his mind as well as his body. And then I forgot what he did. I think it was just because he wouldn't bend to the warden or, or whatever. It was when he got out of the hole. Yeah. He was being dragged away, and he stopped and turned to the warden and said, It's okay, warden. I talked to my mother last night. I had a dream. And she said, There's a special place in hell, burning hot just for you. Yeah. And it got into the warden's skin. Yeah. And, like, he got the warden freaked out. Yeah. And because of this, everyone's like, Whoa. Okay. Like, the warden can't touch him. Like, he's... Well, there's that, but I want to talk about why did the warden end up... Because Bane did something in prison that made him... Uh, that made the warden uh, put Bane through the uh, experimentation, the Venom uh, experimentation. It was a series of challenges. He was always challenged, and everyone who challenged him, killed he somebody. killed. Yeah. And it was someone he killed at some point that they decided, okay, you're going to go suffer this experiment. Yeah. So anyways, yeah, he got put into that experiment, the venom, uh, the venom uh, experiment, and they toss him into the ocean. Then he came back. He came back to get the venom equipment and to get his friends Trog, Bird, and um, to free the other prisoners. Yeah, yeah. He basically had a following now. They they loved him. Like yeah, they respected him. They feared. Him. Yeah, it's so, funny because he comes back later and he makes Santa Prisca his like his fortress. Yeah, <laughs> why not? <laughs> yeah. But anyways, yeah, so he ends up escaping, goes to Gotham. And when he goes to Gotham, the first thing he does is he starts shadowing Batman. Like, he starts following Batman. Think about that. He was shadowing Batman. <laughs> and after a year, he did this for a year. He shadowed Batman for a year. And in a year, deduced Batman was Bruce Wayne. Whereas Batman's entire rogues gallery... For the amount of years that they've been facing Batman, nobody was able to figure out his, or well, barely anybody was able to figure out his identity. Took Bane one year to figure out that Batman was Bruce Wayne. And that was just pure deduction. Yeah. And by shadowing him around. Yeah, so we saw him go to the Wayne Manor, go to some place where Bruce was at. And then go to Bruce the bath cave that has the entrance under the Wayne Manor. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. 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 At some point, he sees one disappear and another reappear, being like, aha, I put two and two together. Yeah. They're like shadowing him on rooftops and everything, and, and Batman never noticed him. Never noticed. No. Because that brought, we've talked about this before when Batman took a break. Who was he replaced by? So, okay, so. Because uh, uh, that leads into John Van something. Yeah, that's what I'm getting at. So yeah. that's not that's not that's what happens in that is the Nightfall story. Yeah. Okay. So uh, so anyways, what Bane does is he ends up uh, blowing a wall in uh, Arkham Asylum, freeing all the inmates, and so it took Batman a month to track down and and recapture all the inmates that escaped uh, Arkham. And, and this was a month of tireless work of trying to recapture all these, uh, uh, all these uh, inmates, and we're talking, we're talking heavy hitters like um, uh, Two Face and Joker, and Riddler, Mr. Penguin, Harley. Uh, let me go to my Nightfall notes. Joker, Two Face, Riddler, the Scarecrow, Mad Hatter, the Ventriloquist, Firefly, Poison Ivy, uh, some dude named Cornelius Sturk. Uh, some dude named Film Freak and Victor Zaz. Zaz. I love Zaz. Yeah. Apparently, so Bane fr- fr- uh, breaks that out. And while they were, while these inmates were out and Batman were or, or after these inmates, Bane killed a couple of these inmates because Bane's eyes was, it, the to take out the bat was his job. That was his destiny. Nobody else is able, is allowed to take out the bat but himself. So he killed a couple of inmates that were that were trying to kill Batman. <laughs> yeah. So Batman, after going after all these inmates and recapturing them, he was exhausted. 
So when he was coming back to Wayne Manor to finally kick back and relax, that's where Bane was waiting for him, and that's where Bane broke his back. <laughs> Bane waited till he was tired. Yep. See, that's so regrettable. Like, I wish we could have seen them both step into the ring at top notch. Yeah, well, we do. We do later on. Oh, good. But, uh, yeah, so, beaten, bruised, exhausted, and now he's facing somebody he's never met before. He has no idea who this guy is. Fuck are you? Get out of my house. Yeah. Bane <laughs> breaks his back. In his own home. Yep. Yeah. So anyways, after all this, I think it was, in, it was actually in the back cave, I think it was, where he needed, where he, the fight ended up getting yeah. to. But, so yeah, John Paul, John Paul Valley is the name of the guy who ends up taking his place. Right. Also known as, also known as Azrael. So I, when I first started reading Batman. Azrael was Batman. Yes. Uh, because I came into reading Batman at the tail end of Nightfall. So that's, that's why I didn't read a lot of Nightfall, but I did read a bunch of comics with Azrael as Batman. And I did have some Batman comics prior to all this. I do have. I said that would be a weird introduction to Batman. Yes, and John Paul Valley didn't last very long as Batman. Uh, he was much more violent, much more brutal. Uh, you, he's if you look at a picture and if you Google Azrael Batman, you're gonna see the epitome of nineties. It's like nineties vomited and there is Azrael Batman and with the spike gauntlets and the bat cape is is all spiky and it's all like rigid. yellow it's like Protoss yeah like from Star yeah, yeah gold started to try and trimmings. give him armor yeah, and, yeah. it's weird <laughs> it's like shitty space marine yeah uh, I'm pretty sure it's uh, Azrael Batman who started using uh, razor bladed uh, razor tipped uh, batarangs. So instead of batarangs, they became uh, ninja stars. <laughs> and he would be shooting them out of his gauntlet. And you could see it. Like I was reading these comics, and he would shoot these batarangs out of his gauntlets, and they were and getting embedded in people's skin. Like they're getting embedded into their chest and everything. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Way more effective. Yeah. <laughs> and like the thing with those is they're not going to pierce through like a bullet, they're just going to stick and hurt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We can grab them later. Yeah. <laughs> now, I don't have any of these comics anymore, any of the comics of Azrael. I did have a bunch of them, but we're talking when I was 13 years old. So. A bit a bit. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so that was Nightfall. Since then, uh, I'm not going to go over every freaking story, but just but just do. I'm going to sum it up by saying that Bane has had ups and downs with Batman. So after that, uh, yes. the next story with Bane, Bane and Batman. So... Uh, well, not the next story, because uh, Azrael became Batman, and then Azrael ends up fighting Batman. And the first time they meet, Bane, uh, sorry, Bane, he, Azrael fight, uh, faces Bane. The first time they meet, Bane kicks his ass too. Uh, but then uh, Azrael came back and fought Bane for a second time, and this time kicked Bane's ass like like nothing, like brutally. Like, like people felt bad for Bane. Really? Yeah, like brutalized him. Wow. Yeah. What was so different? Uh, it just, this time he was more prepared. Okay. Yeah. He knew to use his batarangs to cut the, uh, the, uh... To cut the venom tanks. Yeah. Uh, if I stop his supply... Yeah. I slow him down. Yeah. So, the next story after that, though, um, Bruce Wayne is now Batman again. Ezreal is no longer Batman the next time you see Bane. And uh, that Batman and Bane ends up teaming up. The next story, the very next story, they're teaming up because there is this organization that are selling Venom to street level thugs. So there's a bunch of Bane running around everywhere, and he's like, I don't like the competition. Pretty much. Let's go fucking take him out. Pretty much. This is a lot better when it was just me, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So him, so Bane and Batman ends up teaming up to take out, take down this drug circle. That's a good storyline, and it's a good reason for a team up. Yeah, I don't like the competition. Yeah. <laughs> so that was City of Bane. Got yeah. Gotham City of Bane. Was that that storyline? That was Mask, apparently. Mask. Yeah. So Bane escapes prison, uh, Blackgate prison, after recovering from venom addiction. So he, so while he was in Blackgate. 
he couldn't take Venom anymore, so he w- went through all the withdrawals and everything. Right. So after he finished beating the withdrawals of Venom, he ends up escaping Blackgate. Team with Batman, now Bruce Wayne again to f- uh, fight criminals. They're just going to Venom to uh, street level thugs. Um, so does he have his Venom during the storyline? No, actually. No. Ah. Yeah. Um, and then after that, he this is what this is where he goes off to find his, to search for his father. Um, and this is where he meets Rachel Ghoul. And uh, so in his story, he ends up meeting Rachel Ghoul. Rach uh, ends up being very impressed with ta- with uh, Bane. And ends up setting up Bane to become the fiance of Talia. Uh, but then when Bane faced off against Bruce Wayne Batman, this time Bruce Wayne Batman defeats Bane, and because of that, Rachel he fell out of Rachel Ghoul's favor and no longer engaged to Talia. And now he wants Batman engaged to Talia, doesn't he? Not? Yeah, well, that, yeah, that was yeah, <laughs> pretty much it's, it went full circle. He yeah, went, he yeah, wanted that's what I thought. He, he wants the Bruce, best. Yes. He just wants the best. That's right. My daughter deserves the best. That's right. <laughs> so then after so after the mask you have rebirth, I am suicide. So so then you have the so I skipped New Fifty Two Bane. So there's a lot of stories between uh, so after Masters, there might have been a couple more stories of uh of Bane, but nothing worth me writing down, but there's more of a side character, or maybe he wasn't showing up at all. He wasn't the main exactly. pusher. Uh, and then New Fifty Two, um I I was reading some of the things about the new 52 Bane, and I just didn't like the way they were going about it. I don't remember what it was, but it just was not interesting at all. No. So I skipped new 52 Bane altogether, and I went straight to Rebirth, because Rebirth... Uh, Rebirth, Bane, it gets good again. Yeah, because Rebirth Bane, they bring Bane back to what made him great, which was the hyper-intelligent crime lord who is uh, who uses a drug to make him superhuman strong. Yeah. Uh, superhuman strong so much that he was able to... Crush Batman the the uh, the bat car with his bare hands. What? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. One of the things I heard was it's he's able to move like four thousand pounds. Yeah, or something like that at top strength. Yeah, yeah. He could he could toss he could toss a twenty ton car. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. Um, I found that out when I rewatched the Death Battle, Bane versus Ven- uh, Venom. Yep. Uh, I went rewatched that before coming here, uh, just to rewatch that. I mean, that Death Battle was so one sided. I'm I was not surprised who was going to win that. Spoiler: Venom wins that. How the hell is Bane going to beat Venom? Like seriously, you can't. Really. Yeah, it, <laughs> but I get the I get the match because you got Venom and Bane who uses Venom, and they're both like the complete. They're like they're both the mirror image of the of their uh, of their nemesis. Venom is the anti Spider Man, and Bane is the anti Batman. Yeah, put a cape on him. <coughs> yeah, give him a utility belt. Like, yeah. make a badass Batman. Yeah, there was at one point a Batman Bane. Yes, sort of. Uh, Bane wanted. It felt like he should have been Batman. So it, after Final Crisis. When Batman dies, when Darkseid kills Batman, and they do the Battle of the Cow, where Dick becomes Batman, well, Bane felt like he should have been the successor of Batman. Nobody better than Bane to be a successor for Batman. But then when he found out that Dick was going to be the, was going to be Batman, he he conceded. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. He didn't actually battle for the cow. No, no. Which is a good thing because he would have won. Yes, he would have. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I kicked the shit out of that way. Yes, he would have because what was it? I am suicide, or so. Okay, so rebirth. I am suicide is where they they bring in Psycho Pirate into Bane's life. If you who the hell Psycho Pirate is? Psycho Pirate. If anybody is watching, watched our episode on uh, Crisis on Infinite Earth. Psycho Pirate was a major player in that as well. I forget what his power is. Psycho Pirate was a guy who got the mask of Medusa, I think it was. The mask that allows him to manipulate the emotions of other people. That's what it was. So, um, so Bane becomes buddy-buddy with Psycho Pirate because Bane is trying to wean himself off of Venom once again, the addiction of Venom. So he gets Psycho Pirate to help him fight the addiction. Mm. Uh, so during this time, though, Psycho Pirate ended up fucking up the mind of this person called Gotham Girl, 
So uh, during this time in uh, in Rebirth, they introduced two new heroes: Gotham Gotham Man and Gotham Girl. I think is their name. Gotham Boy and Gotham Girl. Okay. Uh, they're both like Superman level power. Uh, they're both like super strong, fast. They can fly, invulnerability, the whole nine yards. They just gave Gotham super Superman. Pretty much. Stupid. Yeah, and <laughs> so and Batman Bruce Wayne never wanted to be Batman forever. He wants to retire. He wants somebody else to take up the mantle that he has to to take the baton that he has started. Yeah, he's not trying to run the marathon. It's supposed to be a relay at some point. Someone else takes over. Maybe the police. Maybe, you know, the government. Maybe <laughs> right? <laughs> the court system. He's expecting someone to fucking pick up the pieces and continue on where he's like, Listen, I got you this far. Can you keep doing the good job now? Unfortunately, so far nobody's been able to be as good as Bruce Wayne. <laughs> right. So it's a forever, damn, where's my team? <laughs> but he thought that Gotham Girl would be that replacement for him because she's like, she's Superman. Uh, but uh, Psycho Pirate ended up fucking with her head and she ended up going insane. So in this story, Batman assembled a team to go and <clears throat> kidnap Psycho Pirate from Bane. To bring Psycho Pirate back to cure Gotham Girl. Oh. Yes. <laughs> How's that go? So, uh, the team that he puts together is... Uh, recruits various characters, kidnap Psycho Pirate. So, he, so, this is the team that Batman puts together. Okay. okay. You have the Ventriloquist. Okay. You have Bronze Tiger. You have Jewel. Uh, Jewel and Punch, they're a duo. And Catwoman. Bunch of villains? Yes. Yeah. He took them from uh, from Arkham. Oh, wow. I don't know half of them. No, so Ventriloquist, you know who he is. Yes. Um, and Bronze Tiger, you know who he is. No. In Arrow, he's the one that's portrayed by um, uh, fucking, what's his name? Uh, Spawn. Michael J. White. Yeah, Michael J. White in Arrow. It was one of the later seasons. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, he he plays Bronze Tiger. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, just a really good martial arts. Yes. A really good fight. Yeah. Yeah, yeah Michael J. White's wicked. <laughs> yeah. Now, speaking of which, I fucking love that American Ninja Warrior, uh, Jason Amell, or Stephen Amell. It was pretty good, huh? It's amazing. It's the good. guy's legit. Yeah, he's a real era. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, so the reason why he got this team, and this team was, so this was more of a showcase of Batman's ability to really manipulate a situation and to and really showcase his strategic mind. So what he, so this entire group what they did is that they brought him in because uh, ventriloquist can't be controlled by psycho pirate first okay. of all because uh, there's um, uh, so batman manipulated the events where psycho pirate will run into ventriloquist and psycho pirate will try and turn off the ventriloquist but when you but ventriloquist didn't have his puppet with him right so it's just just the ventriloquist himself so when uh, the psycho pirate tries to turn off the ventriloquist well, the dummy personality took over and ends up beating the shot of Psycho Pirate. Because, so, the Ventriloquist himself, he's very timid. He's not scary at all. Dummy, the personality of the dummy is this terrifying one. <laughs> so when Psycho Pirate tries to shut down the Ventriloquist, that that allowed the, the, the dummy persona to come into play and beat the shot out of him. So the Ventriloquist is essentially haunted by his own dummy. Yes. Okay. Well, it's he suffers multiple personality syndrome. Oh. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, because remember the ventriloquist, the ventriloquist is the Batman villain who walks around with the, with the, yeah, with the, the, the gangster, the gangster dummy. Yes. Yes, I remember now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, it reminds me of like, the Goosebumps doll. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, like, that's why he brought him in. Uh, Very smart. Uh, Jewel and Punch. Why was it that he brought in Jewel and Punch? I don't know who the characters are either. They were new to me. I well, I would know. imagine Catwoman's because her senses should be able to tell when she's being manipulated. Uh, no, so Catwoman was to betray everybody. Catwoman uh, ends up turning in Batman so that she gains Bane's trust and go on a ba uh, Bane's side. Mm. Um, anyways, 
long story short, at the end of this story, Batman succeeds. They end up kidnapping um, a psycho pirate to bring him back to Arkham to cure Gotham Girl. So the follow-up story, which is I Am Bane. Okay. Uh, this is Bane. Uh, oh, yeah. And, and Batman, in this, Batman kicked the shit out of Bane afterwards. Like, like just, like, put the smack down on him. Remember when you broke my back? Yeah. <laughs> pretty much, uh, Batman pretty much broke Bane's back in this story. Okay. So, at the end of the story, you see Bane crawling and just saying one word. Venom. <laughs> so the next story, I am Bane. Bane's back on Venom. Well, he has to, That's and cool. because he doesn't have he doesn't have psycho power to to get rid of the addiction, to get rid of the urges. Well, plus he just got his ass blocks. kicked so damn bad that he needed it. Yeah. So he got, so he got the, um, uh, he got the. Oh, uh, yeah. He got he got he's back on Venom, and now he is on. A mission to get Psycho Pirate back. He is tearing a swath through everybody and anybody who gets in his way. He breaks into Arkham Asylum and uh, he gets greeted by a bunch of people at Arkham and Bane just murders. He beats the shit out of everybody. Like uh, Batman ends up releasing all the inmates in Arkham to buy him time <laughs> he knew that Bane is on his way so when Bane gets Arkham Batman ends up releasing all the prisoners and Bane walked through all of them like beat the shit out of all of them that's not Killer Croc um, uh, uh, all of them yeah uh, Mr. Freeze um, well like a lot of these guys they're not gonna fare well in a physical conflict no <laughs> so before all this though so when batman was bringing psycho pirate uh he was having a uh a, a breakfast conversation with uh with uh, uh with damien uh with dick and uh, with uh jason todd um and with a fourth guy who wasn't a robin I forgot who he was doesn't matter uh, but he, Batman ends up having a conversation with all of them, telling them to leave Gotham. Bane's coming. He's coming for Psycho Pirate. He knows I'm Psycho Pirate. He will go through anybody that's in his way to get back to Psycho Pirate. I need you to leave Gotham. <laughs> I can't risk you all dying. For me. Yeah, yeah. They obviously don't listen to him. They take it upon themselves to go after Bane to to, to, to protect Bruce. Uh, so when Bruce came back to the Batcave, he found all of them hanging. He, Bane beat the shit out of all of them. Damien and Dick and uh, Jason Todd and hung them. They were all hanging from a rope. They all survived. And Batman ends up bringing them to unconscious, brought them, called in Superman and brought all of them to the uh, to Superman's Fortress of Solitude to keep them away from this entire situation. You should have just told Superman to deal with Bane while he was Well, that's, that's the thing, is that he could have, but he they actually have that conversation. Like, you know, I could, you know, stop my finger and this is all done, right? And Batman's like, this is my fight. This is, this is, this is, this is my I know fight. you can, but I want to do it. Pretty much. <laughs> pretty much. Yes, Superman could have easily have finished this all off and like, Seconds. It's great that they state it in the comic. Yeah. I could do this. I know. Fuck off. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wait, Clark. Just keep my family safe. Yeah. Just keep my family safe. <sighs> yeah. So, um, but yeah, so that's that story. So Batman uh, ends up freeing all the inmates. Um, it's funny. It's moments like those that kind of make, make you agree with Marvel's stance on Civil War. Yeah. Yeah. Right? It's like, well, but... You don't need all this collateral damage and extra mayhem and explosions and live loss. Let me solve it now. No, I want to do it. All right. Uh, no wonder there's civil war. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Where's the responsibility in it? Yeah, come on, Bruce. Yeah, I could do it, though. Let me do it. Yeah, much well, safer, much cleaner. Mm -hmm. Well, that's to say you have to do everything from now on. I'm going to go retire. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. it gets to that point. But in this story, so here's another uh, put into focus on how powerful Bane is. Not just physically strong, but how good of a fighter he is and how intelligent he is. 
one of those inmates that are in Arkham that ba- that Bane ends up pummeling uh, is uh, Solomon Grundy. No way. Yeah. Yeah, beats the shit out of Solomon Grundy. That's funny. Yeah. Wasn't a Monday. No. <laughs> no, it was not. And but I didn't write anything for City of Bane. I was going to start researching City of Bane, but I was getting into a lot of things researching on Bane, and I felt like it, this pretty much gets to the core of what I wanted to talk about Bane, which is, like, the point of the show is to to show you what's the difference between the the movie versions versus the, the comic book versions of Bane. And that's, I think we've done a good job of, of doing a side-by-side comparison of the comic book version versus the movie version. Yeah. Uh, so uh, the Tom Hardy one is the closest one to the comic book Bane. Still not quite at the level. They've done so many animated movies of actual stories. Like they did The Killing Joke and, yeah. and uh, The Last Laugh and they did The Long Halloween. I don't know, and they've, so they've even done the death of Superman. I don't know why they haven't done an animated Nightfall yet. I would love for them to do an animated Nightfall. They should. Yeah, they should. They absolutely should. Um, I believe also Arkham, the Batman game. Did you play that one? Was yes. Bane not in that also? Yeah, he was. Yeah, he was central part actually. Yeah. In the second one, I think it was where Joker ends up. Yeah, it was the second mm-hmm. one. It was Arkham City where Joker ends up. Combining the venom with the with the with the Joker's uh, laugh serum, yeah, to make a super uh, a super drug. And he sends Bane out to get Batman, and Bane says, "No, he's already coming for you. I'm yeah. away from here." Yeah, <laughs> yes. Yeah. So yeah, Bane's come on and off of drugs, uh, off of the venom. He's been without the venom. He's been with venom. He's been. A somewhat good guy, and he's been mostly a bad guy. I, I, I would never consider him an anti-hero. He's not Deadpool or anything like that. He's, he is a bad guy. He is a villain. He is a criminal, but he's not, he's not Joker. He's not devoid of. He's more of a Thanos villain than yeah, a Carnage no. villain. No, even that. Thanos is more like Carnage. Thanos is all about death. Um, if anything, I would say Bane is more like. Kingpin? No. Maybe Kingpin? Control. Kingpin, yeah. He's more about power. I can never see Display Kingpin teaming up with Daredevil or, or Spider-Man. Bane's kind of like a Lex villain. Maybe Doom. He's more like Doom. A little bit. Yeah. Yeah. He doesn't want to see it all burn. Or, you know, just like the, de- just like the death battle, he's a lot like Venom. Yeah. He's not a good person. He's just out there to be respected as a as a heavy hitter. Yes. He just likes to. He's not on the scale of Joker to cause chaos, but he likes to see the pillars of society fall. Yeah. <laughs> now here's an interesting aspect. Somebody had I forgot where I, where I heard this, but here's an interesting aspect about Bane. The difference between Bane and Batman is Batman is controlled by his past. Uh, he's controlled by the death of his parents. Whereas Bane is not. He's fueled by it. Yeah. Uh, and a great example of that, uh, a great example of Batman being controlled by his death, by by his, his parents' death, is Ma- the movie, the animated movie of Ma- Mask of the Phantasm. And there, in the movie Mask of the Phantasm, Bruce Wayne ends up falling in love, and he's happy, and all of a sudden he started feeling guilty because he's feeling happy. Mm-hmm. And he started seeing ghosts of his parents, and he goes to his parents' grave, and he begs them, "Do I not deserve to be happy? I just want to live a normal life, kind of thing." Like he's being held back by the 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 the, the promise that he did to his parents on when they died. Yeah. Whereas Bane, he's not controlled by anything. Nothing controls Bane. Bane wants it. He takes it. Yeah. Yeah. Um. In the sense of. Who's Bane's greatest ally? Like, who's he teamed up with the most? Or is he a solo character? Mainly a solo character. He's he's very in uh, uh, in Rebirth. Psycho Pirate. He's very tied to Psycho Pirate. Okay. And then you also have his three henchmen who are all still alive. So Trog and Bird and uh, Zombie. Zombie. They're all still all still alive. 
Ooh. And they are his closest thing to friends. Okay. Did we see them in the movie with Tom Hardy? No. I didn't think so. No. If they did, they would like known in cameos. Yeah. <clears throat> but no, no, they weren't in the Tom Hardy movie. Hmm. Uh, because first of all, Chris Nolan even admitted that they, I don't think Chris Nolan is a big comic book fan. Uh, I don't think he read many Batman comics. Probably not. No. The next guy to do a movie should probably read some comics. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> who do you think could play a good Bane? Who do I think could play a good Bane? You need somebody who is who could be Jack, but in this today's day and age, with like all the trainers and like the, the like the 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 Marvel uh, the Marvel machine and whatnot. Jason Statham? Uh, no. No. Mm, maybe. A little old, but maybe, maybe, uh, probably somebody younger. I would, I would probably want somebody younger. Um, depending on the Batman, he should be the same age as Bruce Wayne as the actor for Bruce Wayne. Have you seen Eric Bana in the movie Chopper, where he plays the Australian serial killer? Yeah, you Jack. might, you might agree that he could play Bane. Really, Eric Bana? Really? Watch Chopper. Because he wasn't that Jack when he played the Hulk. Watch Chopper. Watch Chopper. You'll see. I would, I would, based on his performance in that, I think he could do a good Bane. You want to find out about Tom Hardy? Uh, Tom Hardy's Bane? What? He didn't get jacked for the role of playing Bane. He got jacked for the movie he was in prior to Dark Knight Rises, Fighter. When he played the MMA fighter? Yeah. He got jacked for that movie, and then he put on some pounds for because he was he was cut for fighter. Yeah, he was he was, he was a mass pit bull in fighter. Yeah, so so he just needed to gain fat to play the Bane yeah. character. Mm-hmm. So he just ate unhealthily for uh, to play uh, to play Bane. That's funny. Yeah. Well, uh, the original guy that got to play Bane in the Batman and Robin, he was, I believe, an old wrestler. Yeah. Originally, and he was a four hundred pound guy. Yeah. Um. When they put him in the suit and when they did up his costume, so all they had to actually do was paint the lines on his skin. They didn't have to do a bodysuit or, you know, muscle. Yeah. A muscle suit or anything, which they have to do on pretty much everyone. Yeah. So that was one interesting fact I, th- I found. Do mm-hmm. you think the new Robert Pattinson movie will have Bane, or would he take a sequel after? I would prefer a sequel. Uh, to be uh, to introduce Bane, Bane he's is not somebody... a good start character no. if you're introducing Batman. No, because Batman needs to be established for Bane to beat Batman. That's right. Bane is it's it's more about Bane conquering the myth that is Batman. So ba- so Bane can't be a first movie villain. He's got to be a third or a fourth movie villain because you don't even want him to be a second. No, because you have intro, sequel, ramp up, finale. Well, Bane's damn near the finale. Yeah. Yeah, because ba- Batman has to have established a persona. The, the, the I can't uh, be broken. Yeah, the uh, I'm invincible. Even though he's just a man, he's not Superman. He has that persona that he's untouchable. He's unbreakable. He, he's invincible. So, and that's where Bane becomes even more powerful. It's kind of like wrestling. You to make a good heel, to make a good villain, you need to put him up against a bunch of squash matches to make him appear more of a threat, more of a credible threat. And when he takes on a main good guy and completely crushes the main good guy, well, now you have a credible monster. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You got to be able to beat the bad. Yeah. Or beat the best. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, next week, who do we got? Norman Osborn. We're finally going to do Norman Osborn. I was going to say, talking about bad guys, that's a good one. Yeah. So we're kicking it back over to Marvel. Yeah. Um, to one of my favorite villains. Yeah. And you can't call him an anti-hero, really. No. <laughs> no. No, no, no. He's bad, bad, bad. <laughs> yes. Well, uh, like we said, Norman Osborn, mm-hmm. Green Goblin. I don't know if I could do it in one episode. We'll see. We'll see what we can do. Yeah. So the start uh, of Norman Osborn. Yes. Yeah. So as you can see, we're back to our usual setup, back to the studio here. Yeah. Uh, took our couple weeks of quarantine. Yeah. And here we are. So we're all healthy. 
<laughs> and with that, I bid you adieu. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of World's Clive. I'm Justin. And I'm Mitch. Take care, guys. We'll see you next week.